Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute, persecuted the prophets who went before you. I open today's online service in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, one of my oldest and best and dearest friends, Karen, said at her 60th year or so ago, I know that she's a strong Christian very strong faith, I normally would have said how blessed I am to be standing here in good health, with a beautiful family, with a lovely home, a wonderful life, how blessed I am. But I think I've come to realise that there's a lot of luck involved. Because does it mean that someone who is less well off, who was through luck or whatever, born in a war-torn country, who was a victim of abuse, who was ill, struggling mentally, does that mean that they are not blessed? It's an interesting question because the word blessed is quite possibly the most frequent, frequently used words by Christians. Have a blessed day. You know, God's blessing to you, you know. We, we use it all the time. And, you know, what does it really mean? Uh, Jeff is going to speak to us some more about this. Some people think of being blessed as a spiritual term for good fortune, like when we receive something good or an exceptional, you know, when we feel comforted. But what does it really mean? The Greek word for blessed, uh, I'll try and say it correctly, makarios, means fortunate, happy, lengthy, enlarged. Perhaps the most well-known use of the word blessed is in the Bible, is found in today's reading of the Beatitudes. And Jesus used the term blessed in the framework to describe the framework of the Beatitudes, to describe the inequality of a faithful servant of God. And when you read through the Beatitudes, being spiritually needy, sad, humble, hungry and thirsty for what is right, doesn't sound like my idea of being blessed. But this blessedness is a spiritual state of well-being and prosperity, a deep joy-filled contentment that cannot be shaken by poverty, grief, famine, war, persecution or other trials and tragedies that we face in life. The true servant of God is blessed regardless of the circumstances because within those circumstances our God loves and sustains us. Let us pray. In all our doubts, dangers and confusion, teach us, Lord, what we ought to say and do. Give to us, who can do nothing good without you, the power to speak the truth and to do your will. And we ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who blesses us richly. Amen. Our Saviour leads us and guides us, and by our following, we are truly blessed despite our circumstances. All the way my 
Savior leads me. Who have I to ask beside? How could I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? All the way my Savior leads Each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living bread You lead me And keep me from falling You carry me close to Welcome and God's blessing uh, be upon all of us today. And don't those words bless you or blessing roll off the tongue so easily. Bless you, we say. I'm blessed. It almost becomes a formula, a saying without meaning, a set of polite words. The Beatitudes, today's gospel lesson, tell us what it is like to be truly blessed. They talk about the greatest blessing that we can have and the greatest challenge that faces us living as people of God in his kingdom. The Beatitudes were spoken to the disciples, to people who were already in the kingdom. So their focus is on living as a Christian, living within the kingdom, even though they have much to say to the one searching for the kingdom. Because they're about living within the kingdom, they tell us what sort of person we should be. But they also tell us what sort of God the Father is, and so there is good news in them as well. Consider the first of them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit. We know what poor means. And just as in English, poor has different senses. People out of work are poor. Oh, poor Joe, he's had a rough trot. 
that was a poor effort. I'm feeling poorly. So, also, there were many senses of the word poor in Jewish culture. Originally, the poor were those in a relation of dependence and inferiority. Again, a poor person was one who had lost his inheritance. The great gift of the promised land was inheritance, and a man's inheritance gave him support, stability, a place in society, a sign of God's favour. But the poor had lost their inheritance and everything that went with it. Again, the poor were those who relied upon God, for they had nothing else to rely on. The poor in spirit has no pride, for he has nothing to be proud of. And, it's, and it is to this one that Jesus promises the greatest gift the Jewish religious mind can think of, membership in and the benefits of the kingdom of God. And so the kingdom of God is the gift of God to those who have nothing, no wealth, no great abilities, no great wisdom, no great strength of character even, perhaps not health, who have lost even their inheritance. And as people who live in the kingdom, we are to live relying on the Father. As people who may indeed be richly blessed with these gifts, although we might have much wealth, great abilities, wonderful spirituality, whatever. Despite this, we live relying on none of this, recognising truly our poverty before the Father and relying only on his blessing, taking pride only in his grace. We'll consider the fourth beatitude. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This beatitude is open to interpretation. Do we hunger and thirst that we may be that we may be righteous, that we may live rightly, or that we might be given righteousness as a gift, the righteousness that comes from God? Or that the world itself might become righteous? Do we hunger for righteousness for those around us? Given that much of the Sermon on the Mount is about how we ought to live, perhaps there is some reason for thinking that it is that we hunger, as Christians, to live a right life. On the other hand, given our inability to do that, and our need for righteousness if proper relationships are with the Father are to be re-established, there is good reason for understanding it as thirst for God's righteousness. And given also that we live in an unjust world, perhaps also there is reason for thinking that there is some reference to social justice. In the end, we hunger, do we not, for all three of these? And is there any need to restrict the promise of the Beatitude that we be filled with righteousness to any particular understanding? Surely Jesus here is talking to our whole humanity and its yearning that we might be right and that the world be right. As members of the kingdom, righteousness is to be our concern. We are to yearn for it, to eagerly desire it in all three forms. Yet, we live in the knowledge that both we have been made righteous and that our continued hunger for it will be satisfied. We will be filled with righteousness and even in the days to come, will come a righteous society in the last days. In the meantime, we work both on ourselves and the world around us. Finally, for today, the fifth beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. To be merciful is so hard. It is to show compassion to those we disagree with, to show compassion to those whose lives and values are different to ours, whom we perhaps find very, very difficult to, um, to cope with, to love the unlovely, to exercise patience and forbearance, to put the best construction on things, to not give up when people disappoint us. For we know that we are desperately in need of the same mercy and that God has already shown that mercy to us. So being merciful is not a box that we tick, 
none of the demands of the Beatitudes are, but a goal that we work at, that we fail at, that we acknowledge to be the will of God for us, and we do so in the sure knowledge of his mercy for us. We are the people of God. We will inherit fullness, completion, comfort, righteousness. We receive mercy. We will see God. We will be called children of God. And this is all because Jesus has gone before us and made himself poor for us on our behalf, as Paul tells us in Philippians. In your relationships with one another, says Paul, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. He became poor. He emptied himself. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because Jesus made himself poor for us, all the promises of the Beatitudes are ours. Amen. St. Paul reminds us that God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. We come before our Father in our weakness, acknowledging that we are totally dependent on him, seeking his strength and wisdom. Gracious Father, praise be to your blessed name for your mercy and kindness to your, us. You have come to us full of grace and truth. Before the foundation of the world, you chose us as your own, to be holy and blameless in your sight. You predestined us to be adopted as your children through Jesus Christ. This was your pleasure and will, and we in turn thank and praise you. How wondrous is your holy church, composed of redeemed sinners like us. Bless your church, that we may shine with your Saviour's light in this world. Revive and refresh us by your Holy Spirit, so that we can confess your name before others, pray fervently for our neighbour, and demonstrate we love your love through good works. Be with all pastors and church workers in every congregation in the land, that they speak your word in truth and power and care for the flock entrusted to them. Be with the leaders of the LCA, in particular our bishop and the district bishops. Guide them, protect them, and help them to work together in your name. How blessed are we to enjoy the freedom and prosperity of this country. Bless this land, all who live in it and all who visit it, and all who lead our nation's affairs, in particular our Prime Minister, our Premiers, our elected politicians, and our leaders in business and society. Lord, here I wish to use the words of Robin Mann. Here we are, under this sky. Oh, what a land to live in. How did we come to be in such a place? A sky that talks day after day, telling of endless glory, the glory of God, the work of his own hands. Here we are, under your roof, safe and secure you make us. You are the rock, the centre of our land. Jesus here speaking our names. Oh, what a gift his word is, making us part of his own family. Here we are, richer than kings. All that we need provided. More than enough for this life and beyond. Jesus' blood shed on the cross, healing our broken bodies, filling us with his new kind of life. But how can we say our thank yous? Anything would be far too small. How do we show we care? We can try to share. 
Give us a love of truth and justice. Help all citizens to serve their neighbours through their vac vacations. Help those who are unemployed and those whose work is difficult or dangerous or stressful. Strengthen all families and the bond of marriage. Give all children and young people a renewed respect for their parents and guide all parents in raising their children. How great is your power that you guide the nations of the world. Continue to curb evil and bring oppression to an end. Show mercy and give relief to those who are suffering as a result of natural disasters. Help them to rebuild in the wake of destruction. Comfort them with the consolation of your word. We pray for the modern state of Israel and all who live in Palestine. You came to what was your own, but your own people did not receive you. Turn the hearts of the Jewish people to your son, your, their Messiah, and help all Gentiles to bear witness to you in love. Almighty Father, hear our prayer. Since we can do nothing good without you, send us your spirit so that your purposes may be fulfilled in us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are by God's grace members of his kingdom. As members of his kingdom, the Father wants us to be certain sorts of people, to live in certain ways. We are deeply conscious that we fail to do so. Let's bring those failures to him. Father, you have called us into your kingdom. You have blessed us beyond measure. Yet we struggle to live as your people. Forgive us, heal us, cleanse us, have mercy on us, save us. In Jesus' name, Amen. And I declare to you, as one Christian to another, that we are forgiven. Jesus gives us life, healing and cleansing, now and always. Amen. Blessed are the meek, for Christ's way is low. a baby dressed in hay. We are companions of the one whose name is love. We share his life as we grow. We carry Jesus' death with each and every breath. Our hope is high, the way is low. glory road he was tempted by it too but he set his sights with Jerusalem in view we are companions of the one whose name is love we share his life as we grow we carry Jesus death with each and every breath our hope is high great new day till that day appears all we know is Jesus way we are companions of the one whose name is love 
we share his life as we grow. We carry Jesus' death with each and every breath. Our hope is high, the way is low. We are companions of the one whose name is love. We share his life as we grow. We carry Jesus' death with each and every breath. Our hope is high, the way is low. So we go with God's blessing. We always have God's blessing. May the path that Christ walks to bring justice upon the earth, to bring light to those who sit in darkness, to bring out those who live in bondage, to bring new things to all creation. May this path run through our lives. May we be the road Christ takes. May we bring Jesus to all we meet on our journey. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.